Danger Street issue 3, Tom King writing with Jorge Fornes on the art. Uh, obviously this is the one we've been looking forward to every month, because uh, it's another King prestige book. Uh, this one is a lot harder to remember issue issues because there's so many threads uh, between issues. Uh, that said though, I, I think, mm-hmm. you know, going into because I kind of reread issue 1 before issue 2, because I was like, damn, do I even remember yeah. what all the threads were? I didn't do that this time, and I think, you know, I was all right. I was like, okay, I remember all the groups of characters mm-hmm. that we were dealing with, um, and we go into it. And basically, Lady Cop's looking up, like, different blue superheroes, because uh, it's actually a really smart little page uh, that I really like, is that she types in blue people into Google, mm-hmm. but then she deletes mm-hmm. part of it and puts in superheroes instead. Mm-hmm. Um I think it's a smart little. Sh- it's a smart little way to show our mind like working. Yeah. Cause it's like okay, this is the first idea. No way, I've changed my mind. This instead, uh, and you know, so there's a lot of stuff with her wrestling with the photocopier and looking at different, uh, <laughs> different villains. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, we get Metron uh, counseling with Darkseid and, uh, and High Father. High Father, uh, basically talking about the Death of Atlas and what they need to do to deal with this. Um, Metron talks about going beyond the source wall and the Atlas is definitely dead because they heard these screams uh, in the beyond. Yeah. <laughs> so so Metron, who's always this neutral person in, in you know, the War of Apocalypse in New Genesis, um, sitting on the chair, uh, and that when Atlas died, you know, like, so he goes to the source wall and always wonders what's beyond it. And, and of course, first... just, just to remind yeah. everyone, Atlas mm-hmm. came through the portal created by... Yes. Uh, Starman and uh, Warlord, Warlord, and Metamorpho. They were hoping to kill Darkseid. Dark they got Atlas instead and killed him, which is also the scene that they ended up killing. Well, I say they, the Starman ended up killing the kid. So just right. to keep everything straight here, that's right. what we're talking so, about here. That's how Atlas died. So yeah, so Metron goes to the Source Wall and always wonders what's beyond it. And when Atlas died, there was enough of a crack that he was able to to get through and goes on this psychedelic trip and you know, comes across something that really troubles him. And that's what he tells to dark side in, in high father. And it's weird to see because right. Everything that I know about the fourth world and all of this Kirby stuff, right. Is high father and dark side are always on opposite ends. And the fact that they're sitting on these thrones together, talking to Metron about what their next course of action is um, really powerful. Um, yeah, and what's interesting imagery. is they're talking about how like Atlas's burden is passed on and there's the, the, whoever it's passed on to can still mm-hmm. hold up the sky. Uh, and they're mm-hmm. like, okay, where? And he's like, Earth. And I'm like, okay, who is he talking about here? Like, who, yeah. who's, who's Atlas's burden passed on to? Is yeah. it who killed him specifically? Is it, uh, did it pass on to maybe the kid or something silly like that? Mm-hmm. You know, like, who, who, who did it pass on to? Yeah. So they're talking about this. And if you know about Atlas, right? Atlas, you know, was a, Titan in mythology that for trying to rise up against Zeus, um, he he ended up having to hold up the sky, right? Um, I don't know how much of Atlas works in, in the Kirby mythos that, that he wrote in there. But so they, they started discussing of who it, who, this is how I took it, now I might be wrong, of, of who could, from, from their side, from the fourth world, could hold this burden now of Atlas. And they cannot agree that every time my father recommends someone from New Genesis, Darkseid shoots it well, down no, and vice on, versa. Uh, hold on a second. No, later mm-hmm. on when they're debating who is who should go to Earth to deal with the situation, mm-hmm. it's not it's not debating who should be holding up the sky. See, that's what I thought. I thought that's who it, that's who I thought they were passing the burden onto, that it has to be on Earth. So they were sending this person to Earth. To, to assume the burden of no 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 they're, no they're saying there's someone on Earth who could be this person who who can now hold up the sky. See, and that's what I thought that they were looking for. That see, that's how I took it was that's who they were looking for, and this is who they've settled on was going to assume Alice's burden. No 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 no, they're sending someone to find the person who is going to ah, replace okay. Alice. Right, so so the dialogue here is there's still someone who may uh, hold up the sky. His burden's been passed on, and they ask Metron where, and he says Earth. Mm-hmm. So there's someone already on Earth who has okay. this. We're, so, Orion, because they pick Orion later on. Orion's not on Earth. Right. Orion's somewhere else, killing an alien or something. <laughs> like he's. Right, so all, I, yeah, I read that. I read that as they have to. 
get this person to Earth to assume, because that's where Atlas died, right? And they they have to now they have to go to there. So I completely read that wrong, then. No, no, like, I, no, I'm 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 pretty confident on this. There's okay. someone already on Earth. Like it's you know this is a there is a there is another line. Mm-hmm. Like, there's someone right. else already there who fits right. this bill. Um, specifically someone who has been passed on to. Mm-hmm. So. It doesn't tell us who that is. We can no. maybe make some guesses based on yeah. the characters in the story, but uh, like that—that's what it's getting that here. So there's someone on Earth who is like received probably unknowingly. They probably don't know right. it yet, but they've received Atlas's burden. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, poss- I mean, the, the, the chances are it's probably either Starman or Warlord, but like maybe that's right. too obvious. I don't know. Right. Uh, how you, I mean, how we know it's that lady cop? Right. She's the one that seems to be. Try to fix you know. everything, yeah, yeah, uh, possibly, yeah. Maybe, maybe she was. Maybe it's something to do with the, the person's character. So she was the nearest right. one who was like, I don't know, uh, yeah. fit to do it or something. I don't know. Maybe, uh, yeah. but yeah. So Starman and uh, Warlord are like debating what to do, and Starman doesn't want to just hide uh, forever. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're going to go to this movie shoot to to meet with someone. So they set that mm-hmm. up for later. Uh, the kids, the dingbats, uh, are hanging out in a pool, and this has kind of like a funny twist. This scene because mm-hmm. you think, oh, they're just hanging about in the pool, and they're it's quite a serious conversation. You know, one of them mm-hmm. saying, "We we need a gun because we need to find out who <laughs> killed our friend and kill him, yeah. and we can only do that if we have a gun." So that's a really serious, dark conversation yeah. to a gr- for a group of kids to be having. But then the sort of funny punchline to this is that some guy shows up and starts yelling at them. Because they're in some guy's pool. This is like someone else's. Pool. Yeah, this is someone yeah. else's backyard, and they're just it, it, invading. <laughs> yeah, and it seems like he's like, "I told you, kids, stay out of my pool." It's like it's something that they keep doing. Well, no, they... it sounds like uh, two of them didn't even realize that they weren't allowed yeah. to be here because they say yeah. to them, "Oh, this is why we had to claim the fence." Then is it? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they're lounging yeah, about they're in so the funny. pool like they're you know like mm-hmm. they own the place, like they're right. supposed to be there. Uh, right. and there's no hint of that they're not supposed to be there until like, this guy shows up and it's like uh, it's, all, it's all a bit of a, a bit of a funny thing uh, yeah. then we have a scene with uh, a Manhunter uh, mm-hmm. try to take out because that's the thing I wasn't even sure who he was going to try and take out but it's actually one of the green team he's uh, yeah. he's perched although he does say it's a test he says it's test number four I think he says yeah which is interesting because it almost implies that he doesn't think he's going to succeed. He's just sort of testing what the response will be to an mm-hmm. attempt on his life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have this uh, sort of, you know, moment where... Uh, who is this character actually in the black Co- and yellow? I'm forgetting. Yeah, that's Codename Assassin. Thank you. Uh, so Codename Assassin uh, sort of senses something's wrong and there's a gunshot and he stops the bullet in front of him. He flies up to where the where Manhunter was and the gun's left behind, and he's just there. It's a really good scene. It's a really well-paced mm-hmm. scene where it's very quiet, where he just flies it, up, and he looks around the room, yeah. and there's no one and, there. And you have to remember with Codename Assassin, he's telekinetic, and so it, everything he does is with the intent, and it's just, there's a coldness to him. So when he when he stops the bullet, right, and then starts to take off to where it could come from, it's very eerie. Yeah, he's, he's following the trajectory back to where the mm-hmm. bullet came from, yeah. Uh, so those two pages that are very, I mean, they're they're not quiet in the sense that there's a lot of narration, but they're very they're quiet in dialogue, and it does yeah. feel like it's just uh, the, the there's a good good atmosphere as he's yeah. searching this like empty room. Uh, so very good. The art here is excellent. Uh, yeah. So then we go back to Lady Cop, who's looking at all these blue heroes, and mm-hmm. it's like she's got a blue beetle. But she's like, no, no, no. It's not. It's not someone with a blue costume. It's someone with blue skin. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not this. And it's not this devil looking dude. And she's looking through. There's even blue, electric blue Supermans in this list mm-hmm. of characters. And then it stops at uh, Starman, and it turns out that she's actually showing it to like one of the the employees that, that worked at the gas, gas station. station. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh, this guy. Yeah, it was him. It was him and like two other dudes, and they were in a you know convertible." And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, "Okay." And he even he has this interesting moment where he ponders, like, "Why are you showing me all heroes? Everyone you show me, there's a superhero. Why why is there no like blue yeah. villains that you're showing me?" Um, and she doesn't have an answer for him, it's, but mm-hmm. which does make me wonder, like, yeah, why is she just immediately assumed it's a hero and not someone else? Like, she's just right. went straight to hero. Because all it... they said was a blue guy, right? Yeah, and I get why she'd have to consider the heroes, but she's she's honed in on that immediately as if like, she just knows. Mm-hmm. And maybe maybe that's a hint at the 
the Atlas thing. Yeah. Maybe this is like this like yeah. instinct she's now got. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's a natural instinct she has anyway. I, I don't know. It was, it was an interesting yeah. little like, moment to point out though to to the yeah. reader. Well, because I like too as the guy's looking through me, his his um, voice pops through. He goes, "Oh no, Superman! I know that Superman, even though it was the Electric Blue, right?" And it's it's like the thing that he didn't even know who Starman was, you know. So, but he could recognize him, um, which again might might be a part of this whole thing because we also see that that Starman and Warlord go the meeting they're going to to meet one of the Green Team. Um, they it's it's for a movie, right, or a TV show? Um. And, yeah, yeah. That's not and, the next scene though, so I'm not on that yet. Oh, gotcha. All right. Yeah, the next scene. The next... the next scene's back up with the, the new gods again. It's up with uh, mm-hmm. High Father and uh, okay. Dark Side. Um, and just to confirm what I was saying earlier, yeah. uh, there's a line here from High Father when when uh, Dark Side suggests Calibac. Uh, yeah. He says, "Calibac, we risk him laying waste to the planet, uh, and it risks losing the one for whom we search." Uh, okay. So yeah, so that just further so, confirms what I was saying so, earlier. Yeah. No, that, I mean that makes more sense. Yeah. Um. Because uh, so, he suggests Light Ray and Dark Side's right. got a problem with that. He suggests mm-hmm. Mantis. Uh, yep. They're like, what about Metron? Nah, he needs to stick to his stupid chair. Yep. <laughs> like, all these things. I do love that they neither of them like Metron. I do. That That is very funny. Um, oh, no, it is. Yeah, there's, there's kind of like a, a dark sense of humor to the, all their mm-hmm. conversations. Yeah. Uh, but then it reveals who they're going to agree on. They all kind of accept yep. Orion as a compromise. So... We get Orion uh, stomping this uh, new god's like face in or whoever yeah. he is. Who I recognize, but I can't remember. I, I um, have no I... I Don't get me wrong. I assume this is an obscure pool because Tom King does that, but I don't know who it is. Well, no, that it was somebody that Mr. Miracle dealt oh, really? with in, in his okay, in okay. I remember the because he's got like a a piratey vibe to him. He was like. One of Scott's uncles or something. He's oh, one of Dark Side's guys. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. And so, I I can't put my finger on who exactly it was. Um, but yeah, just just King here in his the way he's able to to get into the minds of the the New Gods characters is something that f- few writers I've I found because the the New Gods are characters that I wish I enjoyed more, um, just because of the Kirby of it all. But there's something that how Tom King gets into it, like their conversation, like you said, the darkness that's between them, almost like they're able to put aside their silly little war, High Father and Dark Side, because the death of one of the gods is much more important than this, you know, eons long struggle they've had with one another. Um, and then here, too, with, with Orion, where they talk about how he's, you know, he's of both worlds, therefore he's not. He's the ultimate compromise, you know, and that played into what we learned about him and Mr. Miracle and what Scott thought about him, you know, that he's just this oafish guy that doesn't really care about anything but war. You know, he doesn't care about the people that are losing, like, you know, so it's a, it's a curious pick is he's the one that they're going to send to Earth to, you know, to find the Atlas person. Yeah. Uh, we get a quick scene with Creeper, uh, finding out that his ratings are through the roof. Uh, it's mm-hmm. doing well. Uh, we then go back to the leader of the green team, and this is a setup for the next scene. Actually, that's kind of separate because they're they're talking mm-hmm. about the assassination attempt and like you know yeah. this was a test. Whoever it was wasn't there. We searched the hotel, but the whole time he's like polishing uh, a, a, an arm made of diamond, and you're like, what's this? Yeah. And you actually get the context for it in the next scene, which is the scene that the mm-hmm. movie set with uh, you know uh, Warlord. Warlord and Starman talking to the, mm-hmm. the, the kid director who he's one of the mm-hmm. green team right like a, yes yeah. Cecil something yeah uh, which is a re- was obviously a reference to Cecil uh, DeMille, DeMille uh, right who's a you know a movie director um, mm-hmm. so but there's they some context here where they've paid the green team this arm which comes from Metamorpho they had Metamorpho mm-hmm. turn into a diamond and they took his arm <laughs> yep <laughs> to, to pay uh uh, to get a team. meeting with this kid. Yeah. Yeah. To get a meeting. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, um, which... You know, it sets up that they're looking for a way out. It's, it's interesting to see like these plots kind of like merge here mm-hmm. a little bit, uh, where this is another plot like tying into the green team. Um, yeah, so... Uh, but yeah, the, so they go dressed in their superhero costumes, and uh, Warlord's like... Uh, I, I don't want to go 
you know, I, I was like this, I'm more than just the barbarian. And, you know, as I get talking, he realizes like, oh no, he's going to want to talk with the barbarian. So we have to go. Yeah. And it's all about, you know, maintaining appearances, right? Like this is who they think we are. So this is who we need to be. Um, and I think that was that playing in with everything else too. Yeah. So you know, the-, just the idea of the, the hero, why, why is Lady Cop immediately thinking of heroes? Not, you know, not villains and whatever. Yeah. It's all about this perception thing. So the, the thing that they're actually wanting from them though, is they effectively want to try and bring the kid back to life. They, they're, mm-hmm. they're here for a way to bring someone back from the dead. And they're talking about payment and the, the, the arm was just to get the meeting. That's not paying mm-hmm. for the, this like service or getting this mystical mm-hmm. item or whatever. And they're saying, hey, we can do some, you know, mercenary work or whatever. We, we can do whatever you want to give us this chance. So they're, they're trying to bring the kid back. So mm-hmm. they're, they're trying to fix what they did wrong. Um, and the, the, the setup at the end of the scene is just that the, uh, the, the, the director wants uh, the Sword of Shambhala. So they're going to, he's going to send them on a quest to get some mm-hmm. mystical item. Um, I don't really know what that is or have any opinion on it yet. Um, and I've, and of, co- of course, Matt's going to look. Do you want the spell in a Shambhala? I got it. All right. Okay. <laughs> My brain works like uh, Doctor Doctor Jones. Of course it so, does. Yeah. Of course it does. Yeah. I was actually just quickly rereading that page while you were talking because I couldn't remember yeah. what the hell they wanted from because yeah. the, the book is quite dense. There's, there's so many characters doing different things that it's very easy to misplace details. So all that comes up is a book called The Sword of Shambhala: Mystery of the Return of Christ. Um. I assume this is not a DC book. <laughs> no. Yeah, this is just when I say a... book, it's like a, a like an actual okay, okay. Book, book by Barbara Dominiski. I'm sure whatever it's going to end yeah. up being in the story, though, is probably inspired by whatever it is yes. from that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So well, we'll get more context on that uh, mm-hmm. next issue or whatever, I suppose. Then. Yep. Uh, I would could have sworn it was some artifact that I've missed, you know. But, oh, sure. Uh, well, you yeah. were worried it was a DC thing, where yes. it's got some obscure reference to. Yep, instead. You know. uh, then we go back to Lady Cop, who's actually, I won't say arrested, but they've brought in one of the mm-hmm. kids for for the pool incident because the guy said he was going to call the cops. Yep. And she's like, "Look, why were you in the guy's pool?" And she's like, "Oh, I just, you know, I got lost." It's like, and your and your swimsuit, you got lost in uh-huh. your swimsuit. Uh, and she's like, "Look, I need to go and deal with this printer thing because that's like a running gag from earlier that yep. the printer needs toner, and they don't know why it's not working." Mm-hmm. And she leaves him alone and says, don't touch anything, there's cameras, and you'll get into trouble. And he's like, and the kid's actually quite smart, because he's like, they don't have money to like put cameras in every room in the police yeah, station. Not in this town. Yeah, yeah, not a chance. And sure enough, the one thing he picks up is the file on the case that she's building and looking for the killer of their friend. Mm-hmm. And he sees Starman circled. So now the kids are going to know who the main suspect is. And we happen to know as the audience that it is the correct suspect. This is the guy right. who did it. So we have this this element of the story, though, where the kids are actually going to want to try and assassinate Starman, which is an insane yeah. plot like beat. But it's definitely like this exciting thing. You know, if this is, you know, this is issue three out of 12, this is the, not the end of act one, but it feels like we're, yeah, we're getting, like, this is like mm-hmm. a big bit of setup for what the story is going to be now, is these yeah. kids want to try and, like, get the guy who killed their friend um this was this was an exciting moment uh so yeah um basically as lady cops talking about the printer we just get like snippets of everyone in the in the story we see jack Ryder on the on his show talking about stuff we see assassin uh taking apart the gun that was used to try and kill the green team kid uh we see manhunter who did take a bullet to the shoulder you know because uh the assassin did fire off a shot and it, mm-hmm. it looks like he actually did hit him um we see the director on set, we see uh, Starman with the, the Fate Helmet, and Orion kind of on his way. It's just, it's just kind of, you know, it's that thing that you do at the end of an episode of TV where you cut around everyone flash. as yeah. the narration's happening, and it's like, hey, come back next time, because everything's yeah. sort of starting to that, that was the other thing, too, is that this is, you know, still being narrated by the Helm of Fate, yes. and the, the character descriptions that we get where he calls, or it calls Darkseid and Highfather dragons, but calls creeper and ogre, um, calls yeah. uh, calls the um, manhunter and codename assassin two knights, 
but you know and what makes them knights is their sworn oaths not necessarily yeah you know the upholding of justice but it's the fact that they've sworn oath to something uh, yeah it's not themselves. about it's not about good and bad they don't really right. care about that they just care no. about uh, you know obeying or you know whoever right. they've sworn allegiance to yeah and it points uh, out that when the when they're because they're opposing and they're, they're, they're kind of mm-hmm. conflicting because they've both sworn allegiances to someone yep. different um that that might cause like you know like everyone better get out of the way because it's going yeah. to be devastating uh, yeah so and i just like that and he and, and it puts a lot of emphasis on lady cop as the princess but in that that she's the most compassionate like she's the most you know like there, there was a phrase I, that they use but i couldn't I, I do. Can't remember it right now. I really like that description of the two knights. I, I will mm-hmm. say that the actual descriptions in general are a little bit hit and miss. Maybe it's because I'd like fantasy, so I don't really yeah. care about them described yeah. this way. I'm sure thematically it's all relevant and it'll make some mm-hmm. sense later as to why he's made this choice. Uh, mm-hmm. But the, the two knights thing was quite interesting uh, yeah. as a way I to build them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think yeah, there was less creeper in this one, and obviously when we looked at the solicits earlier, it looks like issue six is going to be more more about the kids than anyone else. Yeah. So the focus does shift a little bit, but depending on what issue it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm still enjoying it. I'm still intrigued. Yeah. Uh, it's a little harder to keep all the details together compared to some of his other stories. But yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think it's getting easier as it goes because we're getting used to the characters more and more. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, you, we're getting to know them better, so we're remembering well, I'm, them better. I'm starting to remember the the dingbats names. You know, and the fact that we're calling them the dingbats, or at least I am. I'm you know? yeah, I don't think about low fat, uh, yeah. crunch, non fat, good looks, non fat. Uh, that's what it was. Uh, ben- uh bananas. Banana, banana, yeah, yeah, bananas is one, yeah. Yeah. So, but I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. Um, but yeah. yeah. So, but you know, it's definitely a different kind of Tom King book. Um, than you know something that was even Rorschach was a little bit more straightforward, even though it was this big sprawling conspiracy mystery. Um. This, this I still I, have. I don't know if yeah. I, I, I feel like Rorschach was less straightforward than, because, because Rorschach was so much going back into the, the backstories and it was constantly jumping around the timeline. Well, I don't know if I agree that was more straightforward. I think that was less straightforward than some of the I, other stories. I understood what it was quicker than I have with this, right? Okay. You know, and that's what I mean by straightforward. With this, it's this I, big, I, 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 narrative. I would say the human target is maybe the most straightforward book he's written. It's, that's not to yeah. say that it's not complex and like no. a, a depth pers- no. way. No, that's, that's a straight up like kind of noir yeah. story. But it's a straightforward you know? story that's going more yes. or less in order. You know, it's right. With this one, it's it's a big sprawling narrative that involves new gods to you know street urchins, you know, and everyone else in between. And it's you know, I still haven't picked up on the themes and you know uh, and what and. It, who exactly is the helm of fate telling the story to? You know, that's yeah. the other. That's the other thing. Yeah, so. that, that may be revealed at the end or mm-hmm. near the end. I could see that happening. Uh, oh, God, I just hope it's Detective Chimp and he's just like, oh, okay, whatever. I ain't got time for you, <laughs> helm of fate. You know, like this big sprawly narratives happen, but because they're all a bunch of nobodies, nobody's really paying attention. You know, I don't know. Um, hopefully, that's not what it is. But it's it's good. I mean, Fornes' art is on point. Like, somehow makes the, the you know, the new god stuff look just as nice as, or I just put that in reverse, but it's all like the street urchin and lady cop street level stuff. It looks just as great as the new gods. And, you know, that, in particular, that, that psychedelic scene that Metron goes on out of Fornes was like, I've never seen Fornes do stuff like that before. It was very different for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm digging things. I'm, like the story's getting kind of exciting because like some of the threads are starting to connect up, and like the kids having an idea who killed their friend. Uh, you know the like the new gods coming because Atlas died. Like all mm-hmm. of these things starting to like you know. Then you've got the, the Starman and that going to one of the the green team. Like all the yeah. different threads are starting to link up a little bit more. So mm-hmm. it's starting to like feel like it's paying off, and that we're getting. It is, I know, it's, it's just more exciting. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, issue three of Danger Street, Matt. Yeah. What are you giving it? 8.5 out of 10. I'll agree, 8.5. Uh, really solid. Making me excited. That's, it's, not, it's not like the immediate home run that Human Target was where I was immediately in love with it, but yeah. I could see this almost like. Like, I, I feel like there's going to be like a, just a, a, a line graph going up the way as we get further yeah. and further into it, is how yeah. it feels like to me. Uh, which was kind of like which was kind of like a Supergirl actually like that, we didn't love that yeah. right away it was good but we didn't love it and then it just got better and better as it went 